across country is outside. It's more social distancing involved and they're limited to two teams. So that could uh, cut down on using of, of transportation a whole lot. So I, I see that happening even more and more around the state, being able to, to start holding cross country meets. Obviously the kids have to be in shape. So you'll see more and more meets coming up this month once they get into better shape. And how are our schools working at all with their students, even though they can't uh, be in games? Uh, to to do workout regimens or coaches allowed for example to to do over zoom particular workout regimens and and members of the coaching staff if they have more than a head coach uh, to work with the players on that yes in the Los Angeles Unified School that's the only thing left they have not allowed people to work out uh, personally with their athletes at on campus and since November when they when about 50 schools were granted permission after they had to have all the athletes get tested, they had to have the coaches tested, and they let, allow those schools to start working out, but it was shut down, and now they're limited to Zoom, and they, they have Zoom workouts. But a lot of schools have, have opened up things again, and they're allowing conditioning on campus. Shawmana High School in West Hills is gonna resume uh, conditioning on Monday, but they're gonna have weekly testing for their athletes and their coaches. So people are trying to find ways to, to get out there. And I think it's really important to get these kids out there conditioning, at least to get to be together and and get outside and, and enjoy themselves. Yeah, and, and you know, you know, there's another huge challenge with so many families not having, uh, you know, a good uh, place for their kids to do even online learning. And so if you're talking about an athlete who needs some space where she or he can, you know, do their workout with their coach online, they may not have uh, internet access or a place to do it and um, just yet another uh, a thing maybe we don't think of on a daily basis but a challenge for our young people during the pandemic. Uh, Eric, thank you as always. We appreciate it. Always enjoy reading uh, your work and we'll look forward to the time when it's safe for on-field and on-court competition to resume. Thanks very much. Thank you. Eric Sondheimer is the prep sports columnist for the Los Angeles Times. We're going to stay with the Los Angeles Times columnist and with someone who I know is your favorite, Pat Morrison. Uh, we're going to talk with Pat about a wonderful column she did a couple weeks or so ago about why we care so much about our area codes. As so often the case, I just laughed out loud at, at, at the observations Pat makes. So it's going to be a pleasure to have her with us in just 90 seconds on Air Talk. And we must reject the culture in which facts themselves are manipulated and even manufactured. At KPCC, our mission has always been to bring you fact-based, responsible news. And weekdays at 1, you can get the latest on the new administration, plus everything happening in Southern California. It's an hour of all things considered from KPCC and NPR, weekdays at 1, because democracy needs to be heard. I'm Alex Vasquez, and I live in Sierra Madre. Every day I listen to KPCC as I get ready for my day, and whenever I try to figure out what I want to do for the week or what's happening in my town or just other parts of Los Angeles, I have always checked out LAS. I was so sad to hear when the LAS was getting shut down because it's a community resource and it's something that belongs to everybody. So when I found out that they were bringing the LAS back and that KPCC was behind it, it was a no-brainer for me to do something. I wanted to do what I could to support the website that I love and also support the station that I love too. So join me in supporting LAS.com and KPCC by going to LAS.com and making a donation. about how we segue from one Los Angeles Times columnist to the other, but then coming up on Fresh Air in 20 minutes, it's former Los Angeles Times writer Jim Tankersley, who's now with the New York Times. He'll be talking about his uh, new book, The Riches of This Land, looking at the middle class in America. So it's uh, LA Times on parade today on KPCC. Jim Tankersley now with the New York Times 
formerly LA Times. My pleasure to welcome LA Times columnist Pat Morris, who wrote a wonderful piece about area codes and why they seem to matter so much to us here in Southern California. Pat, good morning. Morning, Larry. Always a treat to talk to you. So much fun. I just, I love this piece because you actually reference a, a much older LA Times piece about numerology and area codes here in Southern California. That was hilarious. Well, the idea that someone would assign a personality to numbers or someone else I, I cited a man who was an expert on the social effect of telephone technology who knew this was so studied well uh, before we get into what what area codes represent to people I'd like to hear from air talk listeners to what lengths did you go to get your area code if there was a particular one that you really wanted to keep or to obtain I want to hear good stories about how you went to those lengths and why you went to the trouble of fighting so hard to have a particular area code. Why does it even matter? Why is it more than simply three additional digits tacked on at the front of your phone number? Why is it more than utilitarian? 866-893-KPCC, 866-893-5722, or the AirTalk page, kpcc.org. Pat, I'm, you know, as you know, a fourth generation Angelino, and um, I, I actually, in my youth, remember seeing stuff around my grandparents' house that had just five digits on it. That's how far, and everybody had the 213 area code, and area codes were even fairly new. So, you know, the, the, the 213 area code, of course, was the first to be subdivided. Um, and you know, talk about what effect that had uh, here when people lost that area code. Well, 213 originally, when area codes were founded in 1947, 213 went from Bakersfield to the Mexican border to the border with Arizona. Wow. It was its own state. And so for years, people thought of 213. But then we started to get the 714 area code, which was south, which is Orange County and south. Then we got 805. One after another, we were divided by area codes. And 213 came to be the core of the city. 818 was the valley. 310 the west side. And I discovered that people really look upon these area codes, sometimes even without realizing it, as a portable identity. That this, that you are, what your number is. And of course, stereotypes have sprung up around what those area codes represent. You know, for me, I have to say, um, I, I had a little bit of a feeling about it when my 213 was changed to 323 because having grown up with 213 and losing it as a young adult, um, it, it, I had a little bit of a, you know, a, a twinge about that. But, but for some of these, because they actually have identities associated with them, it's, you know, much harder than that. And, you know, I've heard stories, particularly people with the 310 area code who uh, ascribe a certain prestige to that west uh, side, you know, centric area code if, if, if they have to get another one. On the other hand, I had a man tell me that uh, he thought of himself as a 213 person and he, he hated the idea, even though he lived on the west side, of having a 310 area code. So when it came time to buy a cell phone, he drove downtown to make sure he had the 213. He just thought 310 was a terrible message. 866-893-KPCC <laughs> or the AirTalk page, kpcc.org. We're talking about how emotionally attached people get to their area codes, the lengths to which they'll go to try and obtain a particular code or uh, to keep one they have, even if uh, there would be otherwise reason to change their phone numbers. 866-893-KPCC. Jeff in uh, Mid-City, Los Angeles, you're on air talk. Yeah, I just want to say, when I moved here over 20 years ago, uh, area codes were quite a big thing, but like people weren't necessarily bringing phones in from out of state, uh, but they were locally a big thing. And my brother, who was visiting friends at the time, not living in LA, he was just visiting friends at a restaurant, and he watched people trying to pick up other people, and a guy went over and got a phone number, from a girl and, and came back to his table with his friends and the first thing they all said is, what's the area code, what's the area code? And he said, oh, Valley, and he threw it away. 
and my brother said, so whatever you do when you move there, make sure you get a, a LA area code in on the west side somewhere. Because more importantly, if we were to work with people and collaborate, I was afraid at the time, if I didn't have an LA side area code, that I, I wouldn't be able to get as many jobs in the industry. Jeff, Jeff, was that area code snobbery that you're describing in that social event or, or